Is that now? So my drawing, I'm gonna to have to move this around, otherwise you're not gonna see it in shot. So what I'm gonna do is just keep moving this around the screen as we kind of go through the exercise. So let's just take that there for the moment. So then, as I said, we're gonna use the proportional dividers again. And if you don't have them, or if you, you really don't get on with them, then by all means, just eyeball it and don't worry about this bit. But this is really just so that we can get a slightly more accurate drawing. Um, and obviously get everything roughly in its right place before we kind of move on. So what I've done is I've already adjusted um, the scale here to fit um, my piece of paper. So all I did to do that is I measured as much of the reference that I want to get into my drawing. So it kind of went like that. And then I took the big end and put it onto my paper to see whether it's going to fit horizontally. And then I did the same thing vertically. So I measured the amount of space that I want, put that on the paper, and I know that I can, at this scale, I can get all of that onto my paper. <clears throat> so the first thing I need to do then is um, get these two lines. So I've drawn two lines. So there's one down there, a vertical line, and I've drawn a horizontal line kind of going through the bottom of this boat and across. Okay, so two lines is on, on the reference, and I'm now going to transfer those onto my drawing paper. And I'm going to do that in pencil before I start because I don't want the, the, the pen line to show up in the final painting. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to measure like that and I just need to decide where I want this main boat to kind of come in from this edge. Okay because I know the whole thing's going to fit but obviously I don't want to bring it right in here otherwise I'm not going to have enough room over here for the rest of it. So I'm going to stay pretty much to the right and I think I'll have the edge of that boat so this is the red boat on the right I'm talking about. And the inside edge is gonna come here. And now I need to do a vertical line. So I'm just gonna take a ruler, try and keep it relatively horizontal, vertical. And I'm just gonna put a plumb line down there. And I'll, hopefully that shows up before I do the uh, go into pen. So there's my plumb line. Next line I need to figure out is the, um, uh, the horizontal line. So I'm going to do that by measuring up from the bottom. Like so. Oh, sorry, wrong end. So don't do that. <laughs> I just made a mistake myself there. So I measured the reference with the end that needs to go onto my work. You must measure the reference. I mean, it might help if you put like a little R on one end and D on the other end for drawing, just to remind yourself if you can't remember, like I just did then. So there we go. So I can measure up from the bottom and I want that horizontal line to come about there. So that's gonna be the base of my drawing. That's where my horizontal line is gonna come. So let's just quickly do that. Try and keep it relatively level. All the way across, let's just move this up a minute. Get that out of the way so I can get the line on. And ideally, I would do this with a long ruler, but I don't have one. OK, so now I've got my two lines that relate to the reference. So they, these two lines now relate to those two lines. And I'm going to go to pen now so I can actually start drawing and hopefully it will show up better. So then let's focus on this main red boat, which is going to come in this area here, because we've already decided that before we move over to these left hand boats. So let's put this nice and close so you can see it. So what I'm going to do first of all is um, I've already decided that the this edge is that edge there of the boat. Okay, so the very, very rightest, not rightest, the most, um, the furthest part to the right is going to come in here. But what we don't know at this point is how high up that point comes. So we know the width of it, but we don't know the height of it. So what I need to do is now measure from there to that top part with the small end. Remember to use the small end, not the big end. And I measure up. And so my top of my boat is gonna come on that edge about there. Okay, so that point there now is that point there. And we know that because we measured out from there to there. 
because that's that measurement. And we measured from there to there, and that's that measurement. So now we know that that is the front edge of that boat. Good. So the next thing I'm going to do is measure to um, the top edge of this bow, where the, sorry, the top edge of this cabin area, where the mast is coming. So that's coming about there. And again, we don't know horizontally or, or, or where across it comes. All I'm measuring now is just the height of where that comes. So I'm just gonna put a dot. Now I'm gonna measure in from this line to see where it comes across. Well, that's not a bad guess, it's almost there. So about there is where that mast starts. So then we've got the mast kind of going up there. I'm not gonna draw that in just yet, just gonna indicate it. Um, let's now figure out where the um, front edge of this cabin area is. So again, measuring across. <clears throat> so I measure across like so, put a little dot, measure up. So it's a little bit like um, if you had a map and you had like a grid reference, like A2 or B2, similar idea really. So there's that. The reason I measured to that point is now we can figure out where this line is. So we can figure out the angle of that edge. So I can put the um, thing on there, just come across. And that's gonna give me roughly the angle of that <clears throat> part of the boat. So I draw that in. Good, so now that we know that we're here, what I can do is start to come down the hill to get that bit in. So what I'm gonna do is again, put my um, edge of the dividers on the edge and come straight across like so. And then I can actually put a line down. So that line there and that line there are roughly gonna be the same. Now, when you do do that, if you are doing that and you're copying along, what you must make sure, and this is quite important, is that the edge of your reference and that plumb line are um, parallel, okay? If you do that so that this edge and this edge are not parallel, and then you kind of take that measurement, you see that measurement's gonna be skewed, okay? The angle of it's gonna be different. So try to make sure that the edge of this and the edge of your plumb line are the same uh, or a parallel so that when you transfer your, your measurements across, they'll be right, okay? So that's just something to bear in mind. There we go. So what I'm gonna do now is we've come down there. So let's figure out where the base of that is. So then we can start to get the front of this boat in. So I'm gonna measure up from the bottom line. So we measure up and wherever it hits on that line that we've already just drawn, we know that that's the point. So what I'm saying is when we measure up from there to there and we hit that line, we know that that's that point because we've already found that angle out. But if you want to check it, you can measure out from the plumb line, the central plumb line, just to double check. And it should be pretty much there. Oops, let's just double check that. So there we go, we're pretty much there. And all of this is really just guesswork, you know, I mean, it's never gonna be 100% accurate because um, when we're doing these measurements, we're just eyeballing and there's different, different things that can cause it to skew a little bit. But this is just giving us the basic framework for our drawing so that we can actually flesh it out in a minute. Okay, so let's figure out roughly where that is now. So we're coming across up to the front of the boat. And then it's got some funny little lumpy bumpy bits on the front. Now then we're getting into the front curve. So this is actually curved the front of the boat, but I'm gonna just do it as a straight line to start with. Just quite a light straight line, not too, too dark. Hopefully that will show up. Um, because what I want to do is figure out where this bit of the boat is now. So we're kind of just going around the contour of the boat. 
Just trying to figure out where these landmarks are. So again, we want to come out from the central line to about there. And here's a good here's a good um, tip for um, checking things in your drawing to make sure that you are roughly right. So if I look at this point here that I've just made, and then I look at the angle of the um, our first line of that cabin area, if I use my eye and I kind of follow through that cabin, look what happens. You almost hit that curve on the front of the boat. And it's a really good tip to actually try and use little things like that to see whether you're roughly in the right area or not when you're making your mark. OK, so what I'm talking about is you sort of look visually through the boat to see where that point lines up with that on that angle. And we're not too far off. So that's the angle of, angle of the um, bottom of the boat here. OK, so what I'm going to do now is put a little bit of a curve in there. It's got a slight curve. So again, trying to do it reasonably light. And that comes up to the front, right up to there. Okay. Now we can put in the um, this angle. So again, I'm just going to come across and put that line in. And then what we want to do is look for where that line breaks and then changes angle. So it comes straight and then it actually changes angle and then goes downhill, doesn't it? So what I'm going to do is measure out from the central line to where that angle breaks, which is roughly there. Come across, make a little mark. And then we can actually figure out where that angle is by doing our same trick. So we come across to the work, make a little mark. So then we get that um, change in angle where it goes down <clears throat> to this point. So I'm just going to check to see whether that's in the right place, roughly. And there we go. And then again, if you want to double check it, you can check up from the bottom to make sure you're roughly in the right place. Oops. It's a little bit long. What's going on there? So I might have lengthened it a little bit. It's because I'm not looking directly over the the tool, the skew a little bit, because obviously you get distance um, when you're kind of looking over the top. I won't worry about that for the moment. I'll take the measure across that way. So okay. Let's have a look now, where do we come in relation to our mast? So let's look up and we've got a bit of distance gap between their mast. So let's look up. So our mast is in here somewhere. Let's look to the far side of the mast. So the far side of the mast comes in about here. And then if we come down, that's about right then. So we've got a little distance there. And we've got a little distance there before we hit that point. Okay. So then we get this little shape now where we're getting into the shadow. So what I'm going to look for now, rather than continue across and try and find the bottom of this boat, there's absolutely no point in doing that because when we come to paint it, this is all going to get painted in one big wash. So what I need to look for now is where does this shadow go? Because that's the most important thing. So, um, so rather than, so what I meant to say there was rather than treating these as separate, oops, separate elements, because in our mind, we know that obviously that boat and the shadow are not the same thing. We know that that shadow is a separate element to the boat. But when we come to paint it, what you need to think about is that the boat and the shadow are exactly the same thing in relation to the painting process. There's no point treating that different to that because they are all just one shape. And that's the difference between analyzing it from just a, um, a very superficial level and saying, well, the boat is the boat and the shadow is the shadow to how you would actually paint it, which is the shape, okay? So that's what I'm looking for now is the actual shape that we need to, to put down for this shadow. So we're coming across 
So we're out near the bow of the boat. So we're not too far away from the front. Let's just double check that. I might have made that a bit too far. No, about right. Um, and then let's check up roughly. So we're coming about here. I think I need to move that down a little bit. And then again, the angle. So coming across. So the angle of the, um, the shadow is going uphill. Because if we look at this little um, space shape that's being created by the shadow, it's creating this sort of little triangular, almost like a mouth. If you look at it, if you put some teeth in there, it's like a mouth. And that's what you want to kind of try and try and draw. So, and then we've got an angle coming back this way. Because remember the direction of our sun is coming from this angle. So all the shadows are being cast in perspective to the direction of the light. So the shadow is coming over towards this side, like so. Um, we don't have a very strong edge to the shadow. So this is um, a condition where the further from the light source, the, the shadow is being created, the softer the edge gets. <clears throat> so here we don't have a very defined edge, um, particularly in this point anyway, of where the shadow kind of is. So I'm just gonna kind of make an edge up, a jaggedy edge that um, will give us an estimate of that shape. So let's just come as a jaggedy edge, because obviously we've got some undulation in the land, in the sands and the and whatnot. And it comes all the way over to this line. Then we go up the line a little bit. Let's just to see how far up the line we go. Roughly to about here. So we come up the line. Then we come in. into there and that needs to be so looking across below the level of this so that's come a little bit high so it's come down a little bit so below the level of that and then we come across and then we looking at this space shape here now so let's measure in so about there and then that line goes up. Like so. And then we can actually bring the shadow in and then up to meet that little edge there. So then this becomes the car shadow. This then becomes the um, side of the boat. So now let's look at this little space shape and try and get that in. <clears throat> So we'll measure up from the bottom to the top of that. And then that should come. Let's just check, see where that comes. It's gonna come about where, where we've got it, I think. And then the line goes across. over to the original original edge. And then we sort of have an upwards angle right on the edge. And then we can try and find our back of the boat, which is about there. And then the, and then we're into this part of the boat. So there's a line that goes up. Now here's a tricky part of the boat that a lot of people struggle with, where we've got a curved back of the um, structure, but it's actually in perspective. So, um, but the perspective is kind of a bit wonky because boats don't always sort of sit upright. They kind of sometimes topple over a little bit. So all I'm going to do there is I'm just going to put my, my um, dividers along that edge, assuming 
ignoring the curvature for the moment, but just looking for the general um, angle and then just make a mark. Now, again, here's a little good little um, example. We can just run a line straight up through there and we know that the that corner comes to the right of this line. So if I do that, that's about right then. So then we've got the, I can drop a vertical now down there, which is that point. And then we've got the front edge, which intersects that, which means covers it over. So if I look, it comes all the way across And then let's figure out how far in that comes before it changes angle to about there. So it starts to go uphill. Again, I'm just gonna do that as little, little straight lines. And then we'll find the edge of the cabin, the top edge of the cabin, the corner. So the corner of the cabin is about there. So let's continue this line up. And then this part of the cabin is actually going quite uphill, up towards the, um, the mast. So then that goes downhill, and then we're into the corner of the cabin and then down. Okay, so that gets us the very rudimentary, oh, we haven't put the back edge in, let's just do that quickly. The very rudimentary shape of our, of our um, boat. So let's just put that line in. So we've got a line there, and then we've got this line, which kind of comes up and then down, like so. So this then becomes the internal. So you can look inside that, yeah, as we can look inside there. And then we've got the, um, this, line sort of comes along and then goes all the way up to the bow or the front of the boat whatever that's called I think it's about I'm not entirely sure um, and then you've got this line there so we can then start now with confidence to kind of put in the internal shapes within the boat so we've got a little window that kind of comes so if we look at that edge there, look, it joins up with the window. Stuart, could you just give us a bit of time to catch up? Yep, certainly. Yep, okay. Uh, I don't know if anybody else wants to, but I'm way behind you. Okay, let me just put this little window in and then I'll have a break. Okay. Let's just do that. And then comes up and then back. Okay, so let's stop there then. I'll yep. So um, let's try to um, expand this out a little bit more then. What I'm gonna do now, I actually forgot to put the, um, the mast and the whatever that bit is, the boom or sail or whatever you call it. So let's try and get that in now. So the mast is actually um, not vertical. It's got a little bit of a, a little bit of an angle to it because obviously where the boat's probably not totally upright, um, I want to have a slight angle to the mast. So let's just make one mark there and another mark there. Give me some uprights. And then actually we've got this other little shape. I don't know if you can see it in the reference. It's not that clear, but there's actually a shape kind of in there that I'll go for next. So we've got the back of it, which kind of comes to about there. Let's measure up from the bottom. So that kind of comes there. So we know the shape starts on that point. And then we're coming off the top. So I'm just looking at the shape now going slightly uphill, I think, 
I can't see from this angle. My board is a bit of a flat angle, slightly. So then, it, and it doesn't really matter with this because this is sort of material. So you just want to give it a general, general shape. And then the top is relatively, relatively straight. Um, and then again, you get a bit that kind of wraps around the mast sort of like that. <clears throat> um, I'm not going to worry about the little bits of rigging and stuff at the moment. We'll leave all that to it later when we come to paint it. Uh, there is another little shape on the front here, the main, um, whatever this is. So let's just make an indication of that, which is going to go probably out of the picture. Uh, we'll just have that in there. Not too thick. Um, okay, so that's fine. So that's that boat pretty much um, all we need to do with it and the rest is going to be taken care of with paint. So now let's look up and then we get this little row of huts um, and a shadow actually that's intersecting. So let's try and get that. So there's a car shadow that's coming along the beach. I don't know if you can see this shape kind of doing which is quite an interesting shape to sort of get into our picture. So let's try and get some of that in. So it comes off the corner of the, off this cabin, and then it goes in, goes behind the mast. Let's just check them roughly at the right angle. Yeah, so behind the mast, and then it comes out to the, to the right, fairly flat, not really going uphill too much. Then we get another shape coming down, like so, fairly rectangular. And then there's another shadow going along the beach and then out of the picture. So this is going to be the car shadow that all of these buildings are sort of making in the background, which will really help us to put in a nice bright edge on that boat when we come to paint it. <clears throat> so we need a little bit of shadow in there, otherwise it's not going to be possible to show that up. Now we can't really tell where the where the beach goes as such, so I'm just going to make an assumption. Bit of an artistic license going on here. So the beach, yeah, kind of hits the line, goes through there. So it's relatively straight, oops, all the way across. So I'm gonna have to move the picture, sorry. Let's move that down a bit. So then it continues across into the distance, somewhere over, over here. We're not too worried about where it goes at the moment. Somewhere like that, into the distance. Okay, now what I wanna do is measure up from the line again to, I don't know, say one of these buildings, just to see where the top of the buildings are gonna kind of come in. Let's just do it to the highest point. So, or one of the highest points. So the top of this building is gonna be way up there. And we know it's to the right of this main mast. So let's measure it on the right of the mast, which is gonna come in there somewhere. Now, as I said previously, I don't want to put all these individual buildings in. I want to keep it fairly, fairly simple. So all I'm going to do is just look for where I've got some verticals. So, you know, if the building kind of comes down, what I'm really looking for is this abstract edge of the buildings as it kind of goes all the way across. And that's really what I want to try and draw is that very abstract edge not worrying too much about the perspective. I mean, there's a little bit going on there, but I'm not going to really worry. The only thing I need to think about is the fact that they're supposed to be up a hill. So they're sort of slanting down like so. So let's just put in this jaggedy edge and it continues up. Oops, continuing up this way. 
another chimney goes out of the picture there, kind of comes down. Cross. <coughs> comes down. Then we're into this tree sort of shape. Okay, I'm not going to put the whole thing in now, but you get the idea that we're going to kind of follow the contour all the way sort of along. So what I'm going to do next is look to get this boat in because these, these, these two boats are really the, or those three, I should say, were the main sort of feature of the painting. So let's move that back up there a second and then we'll aim to try and get um, at least one of them in. So maybe this one. So let's measure in from our vertical line. Let me just tilt my board up a little bit so I can see the, see it a bit clearer. So I'm going to measure now from there, or the back of this boat, whatever you want to call it, to the central point of this left-hand boat. We're just going to come in about there. Let's do the same now to the outside of the bow, which is going to come about there. And now I need to measure up to see roughly where how high that is. Uh, there we go. So that's about the height of that boat. So what I've done there is I've measured in to that point from the central line and I've measured in to that edge and then I've measured up to see where the top of that boat comes and that's to this point here. <coughs> Let's come down. And then we've got a, an actual line that's coming down so let's see where that comes into. Because we've got this curve, which is meeting the sand, and then we've got the shadow and reflection kind of coming down. So let's see where that point roughly is. So we're about here. So by measuring in from that point to there, roughly what we can do now is find that angle. So if I put my, that should, theoretically line up there we go so that now gives me the front edge of the um of the boat and then it starts to curve at this point where it meets the sand okay so now this line is going uphill so we've got a little line going uphill there, and then we've got the edge of the boat coming down, coming down, and then we're actually coming in. So this is where boats are a little bit tricky. Let me show you. So from the side, obviously you've got the, um, the back of the boat that sort of comes down across and then up to the front. And then it sort of goes like that, doesn't it? Where you get that sort of curvature. But when you flip it round to um, like this is three quarter profile, we've got this bit, which is the front of the boat there facing us. But then we get this funny condition where it's very narrow at the bottom and then it kind of comes out. So it makes this sort of shape. But on this side, we don't get that because we can't see it. All you get is you get the curvature of the boat going away into kind of into the distance. So you don't get the sense of this soft curve on this side of the boat. It's there, but you can't draw it. So you can't draw that, that, that curvature. It doesn't make any sense. So you just have to kind of get the edge of the boat right, like so, which then helps to show that curve on this side of the boat, but you can't draw it in very easily. So that's where it could be a little bit tricky. 
So um, let's just get this edge of the boat, kind of, which is what I was talking about there, is just comes out and then it comes in and then sort of down. So you get that sort of shape. And then on the other side, oops, let's just line that up. We get the line that comes sort of this way. Now I need to measure out to see how far over before it changes angle. So you see all of this is going downhill and then it starts to turn the corner and then go uphill. So let's see where it roughly changes angle, probably about where that boy is. So that is about, about there, which is a lot further over than I thought it was going to be. So let's measure up just to see if we're roughly in the right area. Yeah, okay. So we're coming all the way over here and then we start to change angle where we're then getting some perspective involved because this side of the boat is actually going away from us. Like so. Because if you look here, that's the back of the boat and it's pretty much a little bit, not exactly higher, but it, it's, it's on par with the height of the front of the boat. And we can see inside it. So we know it's below our eye level. So that's why the back of the boat's higher than the front of the boat. Okay, and then we're gonna get this shadow in next. So let's try to make a guess of where that comes. And then I'll have a little break again. And then if you are drawing, you can plumb line, which is roughly there. Let's just make a little mark. Stuart, can you bring your picture down just a little bit? It's out of... It's out of shot, is it? Yes. The, um, the reference, you mean? Yes. Okay, yep, yeah, let's put that there so then we can... Thank you. ...see that a bit clearer, can't you? There we go. Um, so let's measure from the plan line to the other side. So that's going to be about there. So what I've done is just measured from the plumb line to this part, plumb line to this part, and then we need to see vertically how high up it roughly comes. So that's coming up a bit higher about there and also to about there. Okay, so then I can check the angle. So the angle is going sort of that way. So that's now gonna be where the back of the boat is gonna come in. Just bear with me one second. I think I've got a delivery coming. So let me just put you on hold a sec. Back in a moment. <clears throat> So I'm back. Right, let's um, carry on with the uh, this boat. So now let's look for this edge of the um, of the side. Oops, wrong pen. So we look for the angle first. So that's going to come through the bow of the boat, somewhere like that. Let's just make a little mark somewhere there. So this is going to be the edge coming down. This then becomes the 
thicker part, the top edge of the, um, the shape, coming all the way down and then it changes angle. Oh, sorry, it was for me that delivery, bear with me a second. You just knock the door again. Okay, right, sorry. Okay, so let's get back to it. So that kind of comes down. And then we've got the front edge of the boat, the bow. So this is the, I don't know what that is. It must be like some sort of winch system. And then we've got a mast kind of in here somewhere. So let's figure out where that comes. So we're gonna measure in from the plumb line. So that's pretty much gonna to come to about there. Let's see how vertical that is. So we'll take that right out of the picture. Let's move that a bit higher. So then we've got a nice vertical mark cutting through the various elements of the painting or picture. There we go. Something like that. Then we've got the edge of the woodwork kind of coming round comes around the corner and then there's some sort of thickness to it there. We can't really see because it's all in shadow. So I'm not going to worry about that. There's a boy hanging off the back of the first boat, which is sort of in there. And then we've got another boy, which are quite nice sort of red, orangey red shapes to paint. So we'll just pop those in. Can't really see too much detail on those. We'll just give them a, a bit of shape. <clears throat> now, what I'm gonna do is just try and look for this little slither of white, because that's actually quite a good light mark to indicate where the shape of the bow is, or the shape of the boat is going. So it's kind of coming down and then it just sort of disappears out of shot and then the bottom of it is coming fairly straight to the front, fairly level. And then we've got a little bit of that, a tiny little sliver of it on the other side, not much. <clears throat> so then we're into the shadow down here. Yeah, so pretty much all of this, sort of all the way down there and across is all going to be in shadow. So we don't need, need to worry too much about the internal, internal shapes, as long as we've got the basis of the, um, the shape of the boat, that's the main thing. So then we get a few little wiggly lines and that kind of thing going across. We'll just put a few of those in, just to break up the line a little bit. Um, and that will do, that will do that boat. Let's take that off there. So now we've got, oh, sorry, my pen's got caught on the power cable. Um, so now we've got two, two main vessels in, leaving us just to get this, oh, just taking that out of shot, leaving us just to get this last little vessel in here. Okay, when we're ready. So I'll give you a bit of time just to catch up on that one. And then we'll get the last little vessel in. And then once we've done that, we'll just aim to get the rest of that um, top section in, and then we'll be done coming about there. Okay, so that's fine. So that's where the curvature here is. Uh, we don't get the a sense of the other side of the boat. I think what's going on here is it's sort of doing that. 
So I'm just going to make an assumption of where that comes because we don't have it in the reference. I think I cut that off when I took the photo. So that's the other side of the boat. So let's put this line coming down here now in. So that's sort of coming straight down. And we just lose it in the shadow, so we don't need to worry about that. Next thing then is let's find the angle off of that shape. Because this is quite a tricky part of the boat to sort of sort of get in because it's going away, then it's turning the corner, then it's turning the corner, and then it's going away again into the distance. So let's take it nice and slow. So what I'm going to do now is figure out where the Let's figure out where the center of the back of the boat is. We're going to just assume where the back of the boat is because it's going away from us like that. So let's get that angle. And that angle is doing something like that. Let's figure out where the um, corner of the boat is here. So I'm going to measure up. Measure up to about there, and we know it's inside the front edge, so let's put it about there. And then let's measure in from the far corner sorry, the central plumb line. So that puts it quite a bit further over than I thought. So then that's that corner there. So now we know that this curve is coming in from the farthest edge, which we already know is here. So let's just measure up again to see where that changes angle. So that's gonna change angle about there. So we're coming back. There we go. So we're coming back at this angle like this. And then it turns the corner. And then it kind of comes forwards towards the bow. In case you get that sort of shape. So it's faster at the front and slower at the back in terms of the, um, the angle. Then we get this other bit that kind of mirrors that. And then it sort of disappears around the corner. And then we get the edge of the boat that sort of comes down and again just disappears into the shadow somewhere down there. <clears throat> now let's look for this line which is going to come off at this point. Let's line that up again. So we're coming downhill. So we come downhill to a certain point, then it changes angle again, then it changes angle again. So let's see where that goes. So we're changing angle, then we're changing angle, and then we're into the furthest part of the boat. If I come across from there to give me the sort of an assumption of where the back of the boat is, we then can meet up with this part here to give us the shape. So it's almost like, um, in a, in, it's a bit more difficult, but it's like trying to draw the, the top edge of a teacup or something like that, or a jar, where you're trying to do a jar in perspective. So there's quite a lot of changes in angle um, going on and then we've got shadow down here so we're not really too bothered about where this is all going but I'm just gonna just so I can know where it's sort of going I'm just going to do a bit of a line down <clears throat> and then we're into shadow already so we're not going to worry too much there we've got um, a little bit of internal structure going on but again um, it's sort of just gets lost in the shadow. 
So I'm just going to put a few of these shapes in just because it makes it a bit more interesting to paint. There's a, a shape across the front of the boat like so. Kind of coming across there. And that's all it goes away into the distance. And the same here. Okay, and then the front of the boat, well, we again, as I said, we don't really know where that is, but I'm just going to guess it's about there. Um, and it would be going away. So let's just bring our car shadow out from the edge, like so, just to finish off that side. So let's move this off here so that we can see the whole thing as one entity. So again, as I said, we've got the, the light kind of coming from this side. So you want to make sure that the angles of your shadows are going away from the light as they are. That's quite important. So, um, okay, let's then um, pop in, oh, let's move that down a little bit. Let's pop in uh, the rest of the beach, just so that we know where that kind of comes in. So the top of the beach is above this line, so we're going to come across. I'm not going to put all those little huts in, um, the beach huts. I'm just going to leave it fairly simple for the moment. It's coming all the way over, narrowing as it kind of comes over a little bit, and then it sort of goes out of the picture. Um, there's lots and lots of shadow in all of those buildings. Let's just measure up from here to where that part of the roof line, uh, the buildings kind of come. So the building line comes from about here. So I'm using the boats that we've already drawn to look vertically to see where some of these peaks are. So there's a front of the boat there. So this first peak, um, which is this point here I'm looking at, uh, sort of comes up. And then we've got these little peaks and lumps and bumps. And again, they don't need to be too logical because they're very far away. Um, I'm just trying to get some of the abstract shapes of the chimneys and the, um, the other bits and pieces. So that one lines up roughly with the buoy. So we've got a sort of a peak and then it kind of comes down. So it's, again, it's all about the shapes. Keep banging on about the shapes, but um, it's really important. So we've got this part of the building comes up, comes across. It's all going slightly uphill as well. Come back down again. There's a row of these terracy type houses. I'll just simplify that a little bit. So as we come to the plumb line, I'm a little bit over the never mind. Doesn't have to be exact. A few more chimneys. And then we come down, meets up with the rest of the rest of the line. It's a very sort of simplified edge to that um, distant area up there. So that's pretty much all going to be just big washes all the way through with some beach um, shadows kind of coming down. So if we, what I'm going to do is just put a bit of a, just to make it a bit more interesting, just kind of cast some shadows over the beach. Um, and just sort of make up the um, the shadow here, sort of going roughly in the same direction as the um, the rest of the structures, and then away. 
Okay, and then finally, as I said, I'm not really going to worry too much about these boats. I'm going to keep it relatively simple. But what I do want to do is just so we've got a little bit of a counter angle going the other way, so you get this sort of zigzaggy, zigzag type thing going into the picture. I'm just going to make an indication of where these chains are sort of coming, just with a very simple line. Um, which will help just in the foreground. And then we've got a little bit of a, um, a puddle there, which we can just indicate. <clears throat> There's another line that goes through that shadow and then away into the distance. And perhaps we could have one more getting flatter. So they must get flatter as they kind of go around like a clock face. Um, like so, a few little pebbles. And again, a lot of this is going to be taken care of with um, water and maybe some gum arabic or something of that nature, but just to sort of break up the foreground a little bit. And um, I think that will do. I don't want to do too much more drawing on there. Let me just take this off and have a quick look. What I will do is just rub out the um, these lines because you don't need those now. Otherwise it can get a bit confusing. So let's just take that out. And I'll take out this one. because that's one of the nice things about working in pen is I can rub these out without worrying about rubbing out my drawing. So remove those. Okay. Yeah, I think that'll probably do. I don't want to, as I said, get too complicated with it. It was more about the, the shadows and the, um, and the simplicity of the shapes is really what I'm after. Um, all the rigging and that kind of thing will go in uh, later. So let me just make a little indication of that there. Um, just indicate maybe a little, few lines up there. There's a little bit of rope kind of coming down. Maybe another little bit of rope there just to link that in. All these little bits of rope and stuff, they help to um, just make it a bit more interesting. Okay, that's it. That's the drawing.